Welcome to Spectral Link Productions video production blogs where we take you behind the scenes of the making of our first independent CGI series, The Last Rite. We're currently hard at work on our proof of concept pilot, The Last Rite Exposure. Today we're going to go through the basics of character skinning. Now, what does character skinning mean? Well, let's start with our young girl Bethany. What we have here is we have a control rig that we have built and those drive a series of joints and we have this polygonal mesh. What we want is for these joints to drive the mesh. When I lift the arm of the control rig up, I want her arm to lift up. So how do we go about doing this? Well, What we need to do is we need to skin this mesh to these joints. What we're going to do is we're going to attach this mesh to the joints with something called a skin cluster. We're going to go through the basics of it. So first we're going to go through the process of skinning the mesh and look at the options we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the mesh and then I'm going to select the root joint, select the mesh, select the root of the joint hierarchy, and then we're going to go skin, bind skin, smooth bind, and I'm going to click on the option box so I can review my options. So I have my choice of what to bind to, the joint hierarchy, an object hierarchy or selected joints. Well, we're obviously using joints. So we have joint hierarchy, selected joints, and object hierarchy. Well, we're obviously dealing with, with joints, so we don't want the object hierarchy here. Selected joints, I only have one joint selected right now, so I want the hierarchy. Why would I want selected joints? Well, imagine you're doing a vehicle rig, and you have a tire, and there's a joint that represents the rotation of that tire. You'd want to skin just to that joint you wouldn't want it part of the body because then you'll have vert stretching. Obviously you can paint all that stuff out, but if it's only skin to the one joint, it saves you a lot of hassle. So this is very useful if you want uh, a subset of the rig controlling your mesh. In this case it's one big mesh, so that's not very helpful, but if we had a small accessory such as uh, maybe a shirt that we had skin to it, we wouldn't want necessarily all the leg joints as part of that skinning. That's really advantageous when you're animating because the less joints connected to the skin cluster, the faster it's going to compute. So it does help to only use the joints you need in that case. But we're going to go joint hierarchy because I want to skin to the entire joint hierarchy. It is one solid mesh and we'll use the entire skeleton. Under binding method we got closest distance, closest in hierarchy, and heat map. I usually leave it at default because I'm used to manually cleaning up all my weights anyway. I don't really trust or accept the default weighting. Heat map is a new binding method which is really handy if your mesh is airtight and complete. It is, um, it is finicky. If your mesh isn't quite right it won't work right. But again all this really means is the initial weighting and I usually go through and manually clean up all my weights anyway so this doesn't matter a whole lot to me I'm gonna go ahead and use heat map because that does get you a pretty good start but in the end of the day it doesn't matter because you can manually reset all these weights anyway and totally overwrite whatever this bind method does skinning method well we have three options and you can actually change this after you bind, so that's not that big of a deal. Again, you have classic linear, dual quaternion, and weight blended. And I will go through what those three options mean once we get the skin bound and I have some weights on her so I can demonstrate the difference between these. But what the weight blended is, is it allows you to blend between these other two. So so you really only have two methods of skinning. You have the linear and the, and the quad, dual quaternion. The weight blend allows you to use both at the same time. So here's the normalized weights. So we have none, interactive, and post. I like having it as interactive. That's more of a personal preference. It's the way I'm used to working because that's the way Maya used to behave before we actually had a normalized weights option. I'll leave that as user preference. I've tried 
post, which I believe is the default. If we go reset, yes, post is default. Not a big fan of it. I've tried it. I don't like it, but that's my preference. And again, you can change these in the skin cluster after the fact. So if you accidentally set it to the post and you have problems like I do, you can set it to interactive. Or if you like using post for certain things uh, and interactive for other things, you can switch back and forth at any time. Allow multiple bind poses. I usually turn this off. This works fine in Maya, but if you try to export to, say, Motion Builder or something like that, other packages don't support multiple bind poses. What does the multiple bind pose mean? Well, what when you skin to this joint hierarchy, you are creating what's known as a bind pose. And it's this little DAG node that's hidden in the scene, which basically tells Maya what the initial state of the skeleton is when you bound the skin to it. What can happen sometimes is that, say I want to bind a second piece, like let's say I bring in a, uh, a some clothing and I want to start skinning the clothing on top of this. So I skin it to the same joints, but the joints have moved slightly and it doesn't take much if it moves at all, any fraction of a degree, then it no longer has the same bind pose. It's not the initial same initials start. There's a way to fix that. What you can do is you can delete the bind pose and rescan, or you can allow multiple bind poses. So you can say, okay, well, it's in a slightly different position, but I'm going to skin the shirt in a new position. This can also be helpful if, say, for example, your character model was built like this, but your shirt is built like this, and you can put the rig in a different position and bind in a different bind pose and skin that way. So that's what that's useful for. I tend to avoid it. Game engines don't like it. FBX doesn't like it, but it is available. And if you are working strictly in Maya and doing film stuff, it may come in handy. Maximum number of influences. This is really handy if you're working in games. Most games I know have a maximum number of influence of four. Less if you're doing something like like for the iPad. That might be three or even two. And then the maintain maximum influences locks it down while you're changing the weights. So this is for initial and this flag keeps it on. Um, since we're not doing a game engine, I'm going to keep it down to three just to keep it a little more manageable and I'm going to turn that off. Drop off rate has to do with this initial binding. Again, I don't bother with it because I'm going to change all my weights by hand anyway. Remove unused influences. I usually turn this off. I can go back in and remove the unused influences after the fact. So I'd rather have all my influences available while I'm skinning and then remove what I don't want after the fact. It's a little more convenient. Colorized skeleton, we'll leave that on. That just makes it a little easier to see what skin the what when the skeleton's colored. Go ahead and have heat map turned on. Now we have the heat map fall off. Uh, set that to uh, get uh, 0.5 down. Yeah. Let's try 1.25. And again, it usually doesn't matter a whole lot because I'm just going to go through and reset all my weights by hand anyway. So we select the mesh, select the top of the hierarchy, and we hit apply. And it's just thinking, thinking, thinking. The heat map tapes a little longer. Uh, let's see. We have non-manifold vertices. So uh, the heat map doesn't really like this too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of that, and I'll go back to closest distance. And you can see that works almost instantly. We're already done. Okay. So now if we select this, we can see here we got select the mesh. We have the skin cluster, and there's our skinning method. There's our normalized weights. We also have something called an envelope. That's basically the overall 
on or off of the cluster of the skin cluster. For example, let's pull this, and I know this looks like garbage, but that's fine. That's sort of the point. We're going to clean this up. If I take the envelope, I'm basically turning off all that skinning information. That's what the envelope is. And blend shapes or any other deformer will pretty much have that same function. So I'm going to go ahead and pose the leg, and you'll see all this artifact right in here, all these badly weighted verts. So there's a couple things we can do. First, let's go ahead and prune all the small influences out. Let's see if that helps. Let's go, point, let's go point zero zero 0.009, apply. And see, that shifted a little bit. So I got some of them out, but not enough. So let's go ahead and select all these verts. And then what we can do is we can come through here in component editor and go through this like a spreadsheet like there's left index in we don't want that there's left leg in effect let's go ahead and take all these in joints out let's go ahead and go select ls type joint end Make it end joint. There we go. That's what I want. All right. So we don't want these end joints in the skin cluster. So we'll go ahead and select that, and we'll go skin, remove influence. All right. So that'll help. As you can see, that fixed a lot of the weights right there because a lot of those end joints were pulled out. So now let's go ahead and go back to what we were doing. Let's go component editor. Let's pull out all the bad stuff. Like here we got uh, left leg joint end. Let's see, I still got a left leg joint end. I'll fix that in a minute. Middle, ring, these, that's all obviously garbage. So let's go ahead and shift click, set that to zero. So that's why it helps to have a good naming convention, because that's why that search didn't work, because it was joint in instead of in joint. Uh, bad naming conventions can do things like that. It makes makes it a little bit harder to get things done. Again, we got thumb and a wrist roll. That obviously doesn't belong to the leg, so let's eliminate that. This is all right side stuff. Is that right side? No, that's left. Right, right calf. And I'll leave the spine stuff in right now because I might have some spine stuff by accident. Okay, that's a lot better. All right, so let's go ahead and pose, pose the pose the leg. Now I'm not really worried about the right side because I'm going to mirror this all over anyway. Okay, so as you can see, this is not very good so we're going to go ahead and fix this now let's start by blocking out the weights I'll turn off joints and um, you know select those verts and this area has actually already been blocked out so actually I'm doing this wrong vertex there we go and turn the joint back on Select the joint, and then what you do is you can either flood it with the paint weights tool, or I got a little script that uh, skins to selected. And my script's a bit slower than the paint weights tool, considerably slower actually. But the advantage of my my script is that it will allow you to assign to multiple joints, uh, which is very handy. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to have I'm going to this is collapsing too much, so I'm going to go ahead and get my paint weights tool. I'm going to right click, select that influence, and I'm going to start adding in some of that paint, some of that uh, weight to, to that joint right there. I'm going to add, I'm going to have it a very small value, and I'm just going to start walking it in little by little, coming in from the edges. Like that right there already looks a lot better right there. You can 
come in from the inside too if you want, if that's helpful. Sometimes it helps to, to get in from the from the back side. Sometimes. Yeah, very slowly start working it in bit by bit. Let's go ahead and start smoothing that out. And I'm starting to get some bad weights in here again, as you can see. Come in here and select those verts. And yeah, we're, it's, it's getting like really crappy weights in there again. Because Maya is trying to normalize it and, and it's doing the bad job. Um, so you can do that, or you can kind of come in here, select that vert, and hit the hammer tool. Hammer that back in. Uh, there is a different weighting method where you can set up bounding boxes. Uh, I tried it. I, I didn't like it too much. Uh, but it's there. Um, let's go ahead and smooth from the other direction. We'll have some better luck. Because uh, this, this, if you smooth from that direction, it'll be adding weights instead of subtracting. Um, sometimes the direction you smooth makes a difference if, if you're going upstream or downstream. Um, got another bad bad vert there. Hammer that back out. There we go. Alright, so that's in decent shape. It's it's probably probably not gonna get much better with just a couple of joints. Uh, to make it look really spot on, I'll probably put in um, what we call PSDs or for post base deformations. Now we really can't do PSDs in Maya without a custom plugin. Um, but we do have a, a method of faking PSDs using blend shapes. Okay, so obviously this ankle is is weighted too much to here, so let's go ahead and put some of the calf roll in here. Let's just slide that in right here and block it in. And what I can do is I can switch to the smooth brush and start smoothing the transition over. Give a little more ankle to here. Um, again, I'm probably going to do a lot of this um, with with corrective blend shapes, with PSD shapes, uh, to make it look just right. Um, but sometimes I'll give a little ankle back here to make the Achilles heel look like a little it's pulling out. Uh, the bad thing is, is if the foot bends the other way, it'll it'll collapse. You know, I can't go both way. You can't have it both ways. Um, but if I can get it looking right one way and then I can add the corrective blend shape for the other way, that saves me one corrective blend shape that I have to do. So if you're doing a, a, a video game and, and you can't afford things like corrective blend shapes, or if you can't aff afford hundreds of them, um, you might just have to split the difference and get it to look as best you can. All right, so that's... You know, test it. You know, one one pose does not make it. Um, Let's go ahead and add some more back in there. It's feeling a little soft to me. Yeah, that looks a bit stronger. Let's go ahead and add some more back in there. And 
again, corrective blend shapes are ultimately what's going to have to happen here. Um, yeah. And our bad weights have snuck in again. So let's go ahead. You want to get it as good as you can with regular skinning. Uh, the best, the better you get it with the skinning, um, the less corrective blend shapes and stuff like that you have to do, which are very heavy. Um, and more importantly, it, it, it develops good skills for times when you can't do things like corrective blend shapes, like if you're working in a game or something like that. Um, Save all joints for a second. Let's want to look at these weights. Uh, yep, get more more garbage weights coming in. Get rid of those. Uh, we don't need any ball weights that far up. I roll two that far down. Definitely don't need anything from the right side. Let's go ahead and kill all that. Before I do the calf roll, I want to I want to kind of get this transition uh, worked out a bit better. Uh, You can see here where you got the, the blue paint in here. So the thigh is coming down here, it stops, and then it starts up again. So that obviously, uh, just intuitively, that, that should be um, not correct. That should be obvious that that's wrong. So we're going to go ahead and set the replace to zero and start erasing all this in here. Let's go back to add. Um, you can access a lot of these through hotkeys and, and, and uh, marking menus and stuff like that. I'm just so used to just having the, the toolbox open and just go over there and click when I work. Um, again, it, it's just more of a, a workflow preference for me than anything else. And we're starting to get the bad weights back in there again. Oh, Maya, why are you being difficult today? Uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that open just a bit so I can kind of get in there a little bit better. <laughs> 